It's February in New York City, and Christie's is auctioning off Sir Elton John's Atlanta apartment. This is not your grandmother's estate sale. Goodbye Peachtree Road consists of over 900 lots, featuring more Versace than the Versace store, world-renowned photography, electric boots, and a Bentley. I sat down with Rebecca Ross, Vice President and Head of Sale at Christie's Watches, to talk about the heavy hitters and why Sir Elton John is my new favorite watch collector. Some of these pieces, the watches, are so unique in their own right that if I were to see them without the provenance of belonging to Sir Elton John, um, I would be wowed, you know, on their own. They have such a presence, but of course, linked to Sir Elton John, they just exude his personality, um, which of course makes them extra special. The star of the show is this 2004 very Elton John Rolex Leopard Daytona. The bezel is encrusted with 36 yellow sapphires, complemented by 48 brilliant cut diamonds on the hood and the lugs, and eight diamond set numerals. The Daytona itself is the most classic chronograph you can think of. Um, you know, you think of a chronograph, you think of the Daytona. But this is such a modern and different take on the standard chronograph that it could only belong to Elton. He said that this was the hardest piece to part with in the entire collection, and that includes all the art too. Next up, we have this white gold Audemars Piguet Royal Oak set with sapphires, diamonds, and a fancy blue mother of pearl dial. The Royal Oak is a super hot watch right now and has been since its 1972 debut, but this one obviously has some extra flair. So you have this masculine watch, which um, was actually still very popular in the 90s. Um, and then it has these sort of feminine materials weaved into its aesthetic. So it has a little bit of everything. Then, of course, there's this ultra-rare Paris-style Cartier Crash in 18-karat yellow gold. Only 400 were made of this exact reference, but the Crash is the most popular girl at the party right now, worn by everyone from Kim Kardashian to Timothy Chalamet. It's probable that he actually bought this in 91 from the retailer, and I love that because it meant that he was so avant-garde and so ahead of his time because people weren't really looking at it then as they are now. They're actually all in really good condition, definitely not overpolished. I think, you know, he took care of his watches and he took care of his art and he loved, he loved being surrounded by these objects every day. That's just really nice for the next buyer to know so they can cherish them in the same way. This entire sale consists of items that Elton John collected after getting sober in 1990. All of the watches are from that time, and the incredible condition they're in reflects the care and curiosity with which he lived life on Peachtree Road. There's also this Piaget piece unique, which means only one was ever made. And it's exciting that an extravagant watch like this is now seen as something that can be freely worn by whoever can afford it. We have seen a resurgence of this style recently with, as you say, men and women wearing gem set watches, smaller watches, full bracelets that are covered in gems. I mean, it's not uncommon for a man or a woman to wear them now. Um, and I love that the lines are blurred in that way. So it's just great. This next watch, a gold Cartier Santos Carré, is actually very polarizing due to the fact that it's been customized. To the purists, anything aftermarket is deeply frowned upon. But for this, Christie's is making an exception. I mean, normally, if we were to come across a watch that had aftermarket diamonds or had some other custom setting to it, we wouldn't think so highly of it because it didn't come from the manufacturer that way and it wasn't born that way, so to speak. But since it comes from Sir Elton John and he actually asked for that customization, it's a whole other story. This 18 karat white gold, very icy Vacheron Constantin might be my personal favorite of the sale because it's keeping a little secret. You um, can probably tell or wonder where the dial is. Um, it is called a concealed dial or sometimes it's called a secret dial because uh, here you have to actually slide the cabochon crown to open the shutter or blinds as they're sometimes called in order to see the watch face. These kinds of watches, they were produced in the Art Deco period. 
Bershaw and Constantine reintroduced this specific model um, in the late 90s, early 2000s, um, but it still obviously has the Art Deco feel, the same design, and these kinds of watches are really having a resurgence. It's, it's really a jewelry piece, but it's also a watch. Okay, so say what you want about Hublot, but the Big Bang watch completely shook the industry when it debuted under the creative vision of Jean-Claude Biver in 2005. Very masculine and devoid of any bling, this watch is unlike anything in Sir Elton John's collection, but it is in line with his unconventional spirit. It definitely speaks to uh, him as a collector and his understanding of why watches are important and really having the full spectrum um, of watches in his collection. This Alanga and Zona Saxonia watch is the sleeper hit of the sale, revealing Elton John's prowess as a collector, but still letting his personality shine through. In 34 millimeters and a little bit of bling. Alang and Zone is usually or typically a watch brand that is more for insiders, I would say. It's not really a watch brand that uh, the mass market necessarily latches onto. Um, so seeing it in a more playful light, um, in a smaller size, um, but still with the sapphire case back where you can see the gorgeous movement. It still has obviously all the capabilities of Langanzani, but it's just a bit more playful in its aesthetic, which is so perfect to be part of Elton John's collection. I actually love this watch. It's clear that he treated his watches much like his art and really saw them as art pieces in themselves, which they clearly are. And I just love how much he cherished them. You know, everything in his Atlanta residence that's in the collection of all of our sales at Christie's was cherished by him and bought with a lot of love. And I think, you know, that just comes through with all of their designs and the great shape that they've been maintained.